We're now joined by Derek Culver. Please use the raise hand feature to ask your question for Mr. Culver. We will start with Greg Hunter. Derek, you couldn't, you guys couldn't just quite put them away. What did, what did it finally take to sort of throw the knockout punch? To be honest with you, I don't even think we ended up throwing a knockout punch. To be honest with you, I feel like we uh, just end up just living off our talent and, you know, just being a better team. We wasn't really, like, trying to, like, execute, I feel like, to our best of our ability. So, um, I mean, we got the win, though, so we just go back and fix it. Ryan Pritt. Hey, Derek, when you're coming off a of one like Tuesday, as emotional as that was, how tough is it to get the energy level back up when you've only got a day in between? I know you have the 24-hour rule, but I got to imagine that's easier said than done, right? Right. You don't even feel the 24 hours. Um, like I said, uh, it, we're always busy. Like I said, Coachy tries his best to uh, fit in free time for us, you know, um, within, like, the practice days and, you know, off days. So, um, it, I mean, we're, we're starting to feel it, but like I said, we're not really going to complain on because we have to get used to it because it's out. It's just pretty much like turning the time. Justin Jackson. Hey, Derek. Um, obviously, you guys are going to play Saturday for a chance to finish uh, second in the league. Mm -hmm. You know, with everything you guys have gone through this year, with you know players coming and going and injuries and you know this and that, uh, to go through that and and still have a chance to finish second, what does that say about this team? Um, that was tough. You know, it's not really. Um, I don't want to give you like the, you know, the speech that every team gives, like, you know, they're tough, this, that, other. But you guys seen that, you know, like we lost big pieces. And, you know, we kept on moving as like if we didn't lose a piece. So, like I said, um, uh, like I said, it's just hats off to my teammates and my coaches, you know. They're just, they're just real good at work, uh, working and figuring things out on the fly. And then if I could ask a follow-up, uh, I think you need eight points now to reach 1,000 for your career. Uh, didn't know if you've been keeping track of that or not, but you know what would that accomplishment uh, mean for you? Oh, that'd be um, that'd be really big. I'm not gonna lie, to you. I didn't even know I was that close to it. Um, I don't know if it's either eight or seven points, whatever the case may be. I really don't. Um, <coughs> I really was paying attention, but um, that's something that I'm most definitely gonna be looking forward to. Next question comes from Jared Siri. Hey, Derek, I'm curious. Uh, RJ Nemhard entered today as the fourth best scorer in the conference, and you guys held him to five points, and I think scoreless in the first half. Kind of as you guys look toward Cade Cunningham and Oklahoma State, uh, and Cade Cunningham scored 25 against you guys earlier this year. Kind of what does uh, containing Nemhard do for your defense's confidence as you move into Saturday? Oh, wow. Well, he only had five points. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Um, that's real good. Obviously, uh, I feel like, you know, he's the one that's always, like, getting them started early. You know, he's like that little spark plug. So, I mean, I did see them. They were held under um, single digits for the first half of a long time. Um, that's probably due to due to the fact that we were shutting down uh, Nimhart because, like I said, he's, he's the early, like, guy that, you know, they get the ball to the score. So, I feel like that was, uh, that was due to that. Let's move on to Cody Nesper. Derek, how tough is uh, Kevin Samuel uh, down low? Um, I mean, he's tough. I mean, he, he's a good he's a good player, but I won't necessarily say like he's like tough, tough to guard. Like all due respect, but um, I mean, he's a pretty good player. Great hunter. So, uh, so Derek, you've seen the growth of Jalen uh, Bridges. What, what has you? What, what has been involved with that? And is he now a go-to guy for you all? Um, yeah. Uh, if, I mean, if you want to call a go-to guy, you can. Like I said, because he's always going to be ready to, you know, to score a bucket. So, like I said, you can put him in the role as a go-to guy because, like I said, he's he's always ready. To, you know, he's always shot ready. He's always, um, you know, he, 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 just, he just really works. Okay, Derek, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Oh, one more, please. One more. Okay, we got, we'll take the last one here from Justin Jackson. Okay. Sorry about that. Hey, Derek, um, obviously your relationship with Coach Huggins 
goes back before you were even at WVU. Um, you know, he's got a chance to win uh, his 900th game on Saturday. So, you know, just your relationship that you've built with him over the years, what would it mean to be a, a part of his 900th win? And what do you think it would mean to him? Oh, I feel like it'd be uh, really big, you know. Um, uh, I think Coach, I mean, like I said, he has 900 wins. What can you – you can't really just just brush that off. Like, that's just something that's small. You know, 900, anything is a lot, especially when you're talking about basketball games. So, um, like I said, um, I feel like it'd be pretty special – that I get to be there, you know, with Coach, you know, and get to experience this 900 win. You know, our little journey started a little earlier before I got to West Virginia, you know, like you said. So I feel like it'd be, um, it'd be, it'd be a pretty good experience. Thank you for your time, Derek. Thank you.